Hello everybody, welcome to number 27. I'm Jack and today we're here to find out just how far a thirsty old 70s supercar will go on 10 pounds worth of petrol as opposed to a modern, fairly cutting edge electric car on 10 pounds worth of electricity. Just how much further do you think that the BMW will go than the thirsty old Ferrari? My friend James, who is now behind the camera, came up with the idea originally of doing this quirky fuel economy challenge. We both thought it was a brilliant idea. When we started thinking about it, we realized it was gonna be a bit more complex than we thought, because of course, if that stops somewhere and we completely drain it dry, well, I'd need a support car with a generator. That's something I can't really do with the resources I have on my channel. Likewise, how am I gonna make sure that the Influenzo, my 308, is using exactly 10 pounds worth of fuel. What I'm going to do is completely drain this car of fuel. So it has a constant return system. It has an electric fuel pump, which pumps fuel past the carbs. I'm just gonna take off one of the pipes, attach this, and then completely drain the tank in some jerry cans. Then, this is a five liter jerry can. I'm gonna add back, once it's completely empty, five liters of fuel and drive it until it conks out. With the i3, we can't really let it run, run completely dry. So at the moment it is showing 35% of battery. We are gonna to go to a public charger, add 10 pounds worth of electricity. That I suspect will bring it up to around 80, 90%. And then we will take it back down to 35%. So we've had a bit of an issue with the charging of the i3 because the first charging point we went to was actually taken. Then we went and found another charging point, which was fine. We plugged it in, but it wasn't going to show us exactly how much electricity was going in the car. So that's no good. And it wasn't a, a fast charging point. So we're now heading back to the shell one, hoping that that is clear and that that shows the various percentages and things like that. We've got a different charger and crucially, this charger has a proper screen so we can see what's going on here. So you've got 50% showing, but also the kilowatt energy that is going in. Unfortunately, it's not showing the amount of money that's going in, but we can easily work that out because this has 0.59 per kilowatt hour. So for 10 pounds, that will be 16.9 kilowatts that we are adding to the car. So once it gets to that, we will disconnect it, finally be ready to go, go back to the Ferrari and then start this challenge. The car is showing 95% full. So 10 pounds worth of electricity has given us, has brought the battery from 41% to 95%. And we'll see how much mileage we get out of it. But now we'll go and get the Influenzo and then set up with both cars. So now to drain the fuel tank on the Ferrari. And first of all, we connect the bypass tube, then switch on the ignition and the fuel pump automatically empties the tank. The fuel tank on the Ferrari is now drained. So what we're gonna do is put one of these five liter cans back in. And we're ready to set off. Now bear in mind that we said initially the BMW had to go back down to 35%, but because we charged it twice, the first charging point had brought it up to 41%. So that is the figure we need to go back down to. Say what you want about these gas guzzlers, the old Ferraris, they do sound good. So the trip computer is zeroed, but James is also keeping an eye out because I think that the trip computer on his i3 will definitely be more accurate. So what we're gonna do, go on till the Ferrari conks out, and then once it has, we can carry on with the i3 and see how far that that will go on top. So a couple of miles so far, everything going well, tank is showing reserve, but I think there's a fair bit left to go. It's pretty 
pretty nerve-wracking. We're now up to 12 kilometers. And for those that know this car, I have changed the plugs, they're brand new plugs. So even though it burns a bit too much oil, it's not gonna misfire or anything due to those plugs. They'll be fine for a couple of hundred miles. Um, but it is quite nerve-wracking and I do think every now and again, it's already starting to miss. Although by my reckoning at 15 miles to the gallon, this should do about 25 kilometers, 26, which is about 15 miles before it conks out. So we're up to about 19, 20 kilometers, which is I think about 14 miles. And so far, still going fairly strong, which <laughs> surprises me. Oh, mind you, yeah, no, it should do another five kilometers by my reckoning. only running on a few cylinders it's got to be going very soon good place as well so the influenza did 28 kilometers which is more than i thought it would do actually it's quite surprised me and on the the miles that were showing on the ia it was 18 miles that it did with five liters so better than i thought so probably about 16 miles to the gallon something like that which i think is really pretty good next one we'll go in the i3 and um just finish finish off with that see how much further that will go three now and we have done at this stage 32 miles in this car and it is down from 91 when we charged it up to 66 percent so we still have to go down to 41 percent to use up that 10 pounds worth of credit but the influenza did 18 miles this has already done 32 and plenty more to go so let's see just how far it will do will it do sort of 70 miles who knows Right, so we're up to 43 miles and 60% showing, so another 19% to go. These i3s are actually brilliant to drive, and even for a passionate car person, I, I really like them. I think, you know, the steering's quite direct and quite precise, which makes them quite fun, and obviously throttle response is instantaneous. And initial impressions are that the ride also, it is quite firm, but well controlled, so it does work well but it's not quite as refined as I initially thought. Once you use it for a while, it becomes a little bit, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I think a car journalist would probably say that the primary ride is very, very good and the secondary ride, i.e. the bigger bumps, are a bit more, are a bit more evident, I would say. So we are currently on 46%, so only 5% left to go and it has done 57 miles so we'll see if we can hit 70 or not but we've now turned around and we're on our way back because uh, there's not much left to go on that battery before we've spent the full 10 pounds well we're almost there because we are on 42 percent so just waiting to go down to 1%. At the moment, we are on 65 miles. So I think we're gonna get close to 70 before it hits 41. And we've just hit 41%. And the mileage is 66 miles. Can you just um, go in on the 66? 
So we started on 62520, we're down 6287, so say 67 miles. So perhaps not the most scientifically accurate test in the world, but I've done as well as I could. And I'm pretty confident that the 18 miles that the Ferrari did were fairly accurate. And what we did with the i3 as well, I think was pretty close to the mark. And overall, you can certainly see that the i3 has done over three times the amount of miles that the Ferrari did on 10 pounds worth of energy. Now, we need to be mindful here that obviously where we charged it was fairly expensive. It's not the worst, I think, of the rates around, but 59 pence is almost double, I think, what you would pay if you charged from home. So let's assume that the i8, driven a little bit more carefully, without stopping and turning around for all the flybys, would have done maybe 80 miles with that 10 pounds. Well, if you can charge it from home, that would almost double that range to 150, 160 miles, which is really quite impressive. A special thanks to the Hook Norton Brewery for allowing us to film here. Um, do try some of their real ales if you're ever in the area. It's absolutely fantastic. Also, thanks to the Hook Norton Car Club. They have set up a sort of sharing club in the village. They had an initial grant, I think, and they started off with petrol cars, but they now have a pool of electric cars for all the villagers to use. If you're interested in seeing how they did that, you maybe you want to replicate that for your town or village, go to the website and have a look and contact them if needed. Thank you all so much for watching. I really enjoyed doing today's video. I hope you enjoyed it as well, and I really look forward to seeing you for the next one.